Hello and welcome to Glaswegian Geeks. In this show we are discovering that, well, life isn't as bad as we think it is. Life has these nice little surprises, James. We thought, how much worse can this movie be? These last two Captain America movies have been the drizzling shits. Yeah, and uh, we obviously thought, well, since we've started, we might as well. We started with Suicide Squad, which was a... I like to think was good, but the audio quality was terrible. I mean, we're, we're getting better as the Captain America films go on, which is a good metaphor for our podcast, mm-hmm. because the Captain America film that we have just watched has surprised and shocked us and well shocked me i mean for something that's still so bad it was still actually really good and it's the second part to the first one that we done last time and then we covered the film from the 90s before that and now we're on you know part two of the 1979 captain america film starring red brown and i'm in shock it's it's a sequel that definitely improved improved doesn't even cover it this was one of the biggest shocks ever we both sat down before it and we were just we we were in despair we were like right we need to do this just we've already cut deep let's just cut deeper let's just go into it and what happened about 10 minutes in we were no not even 10 minutes five minutes in we were loving this thing like what happened and what as happened, always, James? and as always, we will take you on that journey of self-discovery with us. Uh, we were shocked at this film. I still wouldn't encourage you to go see it. I wouldn't encourage you to buy it. But I would say that you have to. You have to watch the two of them together, so you see how shit the first one is, and how surprisingly good the second one is. We our expectations were fucking nothing. We were just like, they oh, were, we're just, below nothing. We, like, we were just thinking like, oh, wait there, we're going to watch this. We're going to hate it. We're going to slag fuck out it. And the podcast that we do will probably like be 20 minutes long. And that, we'll just attach it onto the first part and make This it- was my fear. I thought, okay, we'll get a couple minutes out of it because, you know, the actors are mostly the same. Oh, Christopher Lee's in it, so he'll probably have a bit part in it. We'll, we'll, no, we'll just shoehorn the two episodes together, part one, part two. But oh my god, there is so much to talk about about this. I think so, uh, yeah, there is. Um, it's an experience. And we know that anybody who's been listening has been, you know, caught up on one Suicide Squad and two previous Captain America films. Don't worry, we have a treat for you next time, which we'll tell you at the end. Uh, because... We've we've had a surprisingly good film with us, uh, Captain America: Death Too Soon, which Maybe. actually helps with the whole good, bad, and ugly. Yes, yes, it's actually yeah, yeah. I mean, the nineties one was okay. We'll put that under his no, the could, ugly could do better. The ugly, because I mean, everybody likes a bit of something that's ugly. You know, you know, Red Skull's face. It, oh, oh, gets me going. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm, I'm in, I'm in, a, I'm in a dark place right now. Yeah, um, James is touching himself again. Uh, yes, re- yeah, the nineties I'd say was pretty ugly, but the first part of the nineteen seventies, Captain oh, America, horrible, horrible. This is actually good. This takes the good <laughs> top spot, and I can't believe it because what came before it was shit, and what came after it was just heinous. I can't deal with this. But what? No, I'm actually shocked with. I don't know if at the time they went, oh god, this is so rubbish. Like we'll just we'll call it quits after two. We'll we'll no we'll not do it anymore. Why the fuck didn't they follow this up? I want to see a current Captain America movie with Red Brown, old Cap. <laughs> that Jesus. that is a dream. That is a dream that I live for. You, you, anyway, there's a there's a long list of shit that Mario <laughs> loves about this film. Uh, and we'll take you through every bit of it. But let's 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 talk about plot first because this film actually oh, has, oh, a plot. No, it has a plot. It did have a plot and a, and a, and a, a reasonably good plot. I thought uh, it's better t- than the first one. Better than the nineties. Better than the nineties. Way better than the nineties. Nineties had no plot. It was just like oh Nazi, oh with our uh, uh, ice and uh, the guys trying to capture the present. Cool. I think you've got that order muddled up, but I won't. I don't. I had, oh. Pff. Sorry, was that movie actually okay? Was that not muddled up? Uh, mm, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, this one actually <laughs> sticks to its plot quite routinely, and I think the star of the show of this film is Christopher Lee playing yes. Miguel, 
Miguel. Miguel. <laughs> the man with a plan. And it's a plan that, you know, that, that gets me going. It's my kind of supervillain plan. First of all, we'll give you a brief rundown of the film. So Captain America is continuing his antics from the end of the first part, which is running around being Captain America on his fucking motorbike and shitty plastic dinner plate shield. And <laughs> the, uh, the interesting thing with this one is Cap is actually being Cap. He's been Captain America. He's yeah. been Steve Rogers. He's, he's, he wants to help people. And he still follows this theme for the first one that, he, that he's, he's an artist and he wants to just see the world. He like wants he's to an everyman. Yeah, like, yeah. It just it wants to do everything possible. Yeah, he wants to live his life and I suppose being Captain America grants him that platform to do everything. Because I mean, I want to say that I'm a superhero but I'm never going to do that in my life. I don't think so. I mean, I might if Christopher yeah, Lee possible. pops along but he's kind of dead. Um, <laughs> well, so anyway, Captain America gets drawn into this thing uh, when a scientist uh, goes missing um, and it gives the the impression that it's a man called Miguel who's behind it we find out that Christopher Lee is actually uh, a revolutionary terrorist uh, by the name of Miguel and he is in charge of a prison somewhere else in America uh, Portland I think it might have been Yeah, just outside Portland yeah. and um, he's using that as cover uh, and he believes that no one is going to look for him you know, in a penitentiary, which is a which is a brilliant idea, uh, and because he's he, no one knows what he looks like, no one genuinely knows what he looks like. They they actually state that they have so there's a bit where you know Steve is looking at pictures and he's like these are six different men. It's like no one knows what he looks like, no one knows his. This film gives you everything. It actually covers its tracks really well in terms of like. So you might be going, well, you know, if he's you know if he's a big well known revolutionary why do people not know what it looks like and what what you know surely people would know but the fact of this film is they imply that he's you know he's an underground revolutionary he's a terrorist but he keeps his identity from the public and that is that is one of the most menacing things about him because he through most christopher lee through most of the film doesn't actually worry about getting caught which because he, he knows no one knows who he is so I find that like a really interesting part of his character. He's a character that's thought of everything, and effectively Captain America gets brought into this small, goes investigating a small town. Steve oh, wait Rogers. There, wait there, wait there. For, you're oh, you're overlooking the one thing that we missed that that we never received in part one in the first part. Oh, Steve the gets shield. His... Yes. I'm giving I'm giving a brief overview, right? Oh, we'll get to oh. that. Anyway, so yada yada yada, you know, Steve goes into this small town, everyone's a bit alienated, a bit indoctrinated, sort of like they're scared of something, they know something's not quite right, and you find out that this city is this little town, there is something genuinely not quite right going on, and Steve investigates it, which I think is an interesting thing, because it's the kind of thing I would expect Steve Rogers to do, to go and investigate, to go do some work, which he does, and, you know, by the end of it, you know, Cap, you know, confronts Christopher Lee, and you know does all the good guy stuff we'll go into more detail about it along the way however mario is choking to tell you about this opening yes. scene this Aww. opening scene no when you make a film arguably it's the opening scene that has to sell it to you it grips you i mean i, I personally think if you're not gripped in something in the first 10 minutes don't see it don't watch it because you're not gonna like it and um to me this this kind of scene was just really shocking it was really unbelievable not shocking as in oh my god that's controversial but shocking as in oh my god this was made in 79 i don't expect things to get any better than this but this is good like so mario take it away and let these lovely people grace their ears and you tell them why you love this scene so much and then they'll you know leave you comments like you're a fucking knob mario what are you thinking how can you think this movie's good I'll fucking tell you, the first five minutes of this, this five minutes of Steve Rogers, first he stops someone bumping into an old lady, which is a Steve thing to do. He's caring for everybody, especially the elderly. Because uh, uh, but, it's code, he oh, is an old. Oh, well, well, this one well, this, this, These two series of movies don't have the lineage of, it was in the Case 40s nice. and then Frozen and came out, so it helps to show that he's a compassionate he's, guy he's a uh, more the boy scout kind of character you know loves everybody does a, a, anything to help everybody so this old lady's worried about getting her check stole you know our monthly check and stuff and that these gangs are hanging about and threatening them taking their money and he's just like you you cash your check 
they do it. Like, like you know, this guy's on the case here. He's going to do anything to help her. And as per, she catches, catches her check. Unfortunately, she gets followed by the warriors esque gang. Yeah, they yeah, very her. warriors esque. But uh, yeah, they take her uh, purse off her. And what does Steve do? Steve rides that red, white, and blue motorcycle and chases the guy down, takes it off her, and then gives it back to her. She goes away. Before we get to the the good stuff, James? Now, before we get into the bit that actually is incredible, I will remind you that in the first part, in the first podcast we did for the first film, uh, we disclosed that Captain America doesn't do anything really Shield related. Shield related, really super related. We see him rip things off their hinges, maybe once or twice, small things. But this film really, somebody obviously sat with them and said, these were the good bits of the first film, if there were any. And this is how we can improve, by putting more of this stuff in. So this film really increases the use of, you know, Steve actually throws the shield. Um... He, you know, he does a lot of super jumps. There's he shows his more super, super strength. abilities. There's more super abilities, and that's a, a comic book thing that you're just like, oh my god, like that's that's I've what you've been see. waiting for this. Yeah, and yeah, so Mario's gonna go back and tell you the scene that that happens, and I'm gonna tell you why I don't like that scene. So Mario, please. So first off, the Warriors S gang member pulls a knife on Steve, and Steve, in his infinite ability, throws a shield but misses, and because we saw the boomerang ability of the shield in the first part the guy's just like haha i'm gonna come at you steve's just standing there what does the shield do james what does the shield do to the guy the shield flies back and hits him in the back of the head now this gentleman has a delayed reaction of about two seconds it now, felt if, like if two I years get, if i get hit with a shield right to be fair that captain america's shield is pretty fucking flimsy but if i got hit with captain america's shield I'd be like, oh, I'm on the ground. I'm dead. Don't wake me up. I'm done. You know? This guy has the delayed reaction. He falls over. Steve has his big manly smile. And, you know, he gives the old woman back her check. And we're just sitting there like, my God, that is Captain America all over. That's the Captain America we don't see in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He's not just a soldier. He's a, he's a human, human being. being. He's a man. <laughs> he's, he's beautiful. And while Red Brown is not... <laughs> Back to this this. <laughs> this this portrayal of Captain America in part two is just It's it, on point, it mate. It feels comic accurate. It yes. feels right. It feels like the kind of thing he would do. He would go out of his way to, you know, help anyone. And that's why uh, that that's why this film might actually get rated above the first Avenger to me. <laughs> mm, uh, that's a bold statement. Well, the first but, Avenger. Uh, I mean, it's not like I'm saying it's better than Winter Soldier because it's not. But you know, uh, a push. I think I could. I, I could make a strong argument about why it's content, not 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 video content, but <laughs> it's, it's it's story basis is better. Yeah. And I think I, I think I think I think it would it would be a stretch. I'd probably uh, want to you know. That that's that's a very bold statement, and I want to make my own that Civil War actually stole from this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Boulder statement, Boulder yes. statement, mate. Uh, I'm just saying it's the best, like, in the bad films. Like, you know, oh. you're, you're saying that, you know, this Civil War actually looked at this shit and stole from <laughs> it. Like, there's possibilities they had the video library to go, okay, what yep. happened before? Let's not fucking do that again. Just a tidbit. <laughs> if you ever. Have you ever heard the, the term "don't shit where you eat"? You saying that Civil War stole for this is pretty much you saying Civil War shit where it eats. It went back <laughs> and took something from a horrible film, which I don't condone in the slightest. <laughs> but yes, please explain. Yeah, so after uh, the delayed reaction shield hitting, uh, the gang member's partner in a beach buggy t- rips off. So what does Cap do? In, in the last movie, we're subjected to a lot of motorbike action. And, and in this one, we were subjected to much of the same. But also in this one, we were heavily subjected to super abilities. Now, Which I wasn't now, complaining about. Oh, definitely not. This, this is what was lacking with the 90s. There wasn't enough show of strength, ability to jump, lift things, or... You know, super, normal superhero things that Captain America does. Now this, this 
beach buggy. Yeah, r- turn it down the beach. What's that in the background? What is it, James? It's red, white, and blue. It is America chasing this bastard down the beach. And what happens? Steve he- runs after this car, which, to be fair, can it be going really fast? Can it be going really fast? <laughs> Steve, you know, catches up with it. He pulls the guy out of it. You know, it, it's it's a proper show of what. That, that first 10 minutes showed me more of what Captain America could do than the 90s one and, you know, the first part of the 79 films. The thing is, is like, you know, the 90s one, a lot of shield action. A yeah. lot of throwing the shield action, but no much else. No. And then you've got the first part of the 79 one, which showed you a little bit of strength, but nothing else. Jumping and stuff. Like, there, there, was, jump. there was some super abilities, but there was no shield. Like I said the last time, if you put the two of those parts together, you would have got a well-rounded Captain America movie. Yeah. But this one has actually, like, done better than the two of them. Mainly because of its plot. It's your typical supervillain plot. So we'll, we'll, we'll get to the important bit. The juicy bit is that Miguel, played by Christopher Lee, um, has created something that accelerates ageing in humans. And by accelerates ageing in humans, I mean that, you know, within... You know, a four month weeks, you'll die. You you'll be an old man, and you or an old woman, and you'll die. You know, um, which I think is you know pretty good. I mean, this this film, you know, the the gender equality audience because everyone's subjected to it. Everyone's gonna die in this little city. So Miguel tells the government that um, if the government give him one billion dollars. He will, you know, give them the antidote and stuff like that. And, or, or, no, sorry. At first, it's like, I'm not going to do it. I won't do it if you give me $1 billion. And um, so the government were like, oh, we don't negotiate with terrorists. We're America. We don't do that. And um, so Miguel was like, well, fuck you guys. And then sets out in this little small town. And uh, then Miguel obviously tells one of the government officials, I've left a bit of the antidote in your apartment. They use a bit of the antidote to try and break it down to see if they can replicate it, which they can't, which leaves them with questions. This is an interesting thing about the film. It asks more questions because when they're trying to break it down, they're like, right, so how do we know that it even works? Which is a good question. I would ask exactly, that. If we because can't break it down, like, why, why should we, why should we yeah, put it in why, why, we should, why should we pay him to, you know, give us the antidote when it doesn't work? When he could just be like, oh, I've got real antidote and option B here. <laughs> and, um, yeah, um, so what they decide to do, um, well, Steve is in this small town kind of, you know, trying to get off with a woman who owns a farm. Because, you know, that's American. That's that's Steve Rogers all over. That's red, white and blue right yep, there, mate. That is. Um, they, the people that he works for, um, who aren't exactly S.H.I.E.L.D., but they're like government scientists. Yeah, you could basically say Pentagon kind of level. Yeah. You, you would imagine so anyway. Yeah, the um, what they do effectively is they decide right, we need to go to this little town and we need to find out if the antidote works. How do they do it? They do it in quite an intelligent way. I thought they find two twins, two twins who have been subjected to the the infection, the the thing that's going to age them, and the doc one of the doctors, uh, Wendy, is it? Wendy Day, yeah. Wendy, um, who's the main kind of lead main squeeze-esque sort of woman leading character she injects one of the twins with the antidote and says we'll give it an hour and an hour she may have aged i think it was a month oh it was a month, a month. so it wasn't an hour it would have been it would have been a day probably no or it would be no happened, no no it? like yeah maybe what? an hour an hour an hour, an hour. I think. Just so she... because if you're aging over what was it like a four days or a week like mm-hmm. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. grant you that. I'll grant you that. Um, so she, so what I get is they inject one of the twins and they don't give it to the other infection. The the other, the other twin. She comes back in an hour and she's like, "This this one that I've given the antidote hasn't aged, but the other one has. So we know the antidote works." And they do it in quite an intelligent way where you take away from Steve and you see the people that he's working with, who are actually fighting their own battles to try and you know, save America, you know, they, they, and a Captain America movie, Captain America tends to generally save the world, but this is a film genuinely about, yeah, it's saving the world, but saving America first, that's the kind of thing about it, uh, so they find out that the antidote works, 
but they can't replicate it. So they know Miguel has an antidote, and that's where Steve kind of comes in. Steve has to go in to find that antidote. And but the thing is, we're seeing a lot more kind of street hero stuff, like proper investigating into stuff, like the warehouse scene, like breaking in, finding yeah, the yeah. powder and stuff. You know, like actual like grassroots superheroing. The interesting thing that I like about this film is that Captain America is Steve's entity. Like, you know, that's that's the mask that Steve's we- Steve wears to protect himself. And in the first film, it was like, oh, you will be Captain America when we tell you. Whereas in this film, he's just Captain America whenever the fuck he wants to be. And rightfully so. Um, so, you know, it's a lot of Steve using his initiative, whereas in the first film, it felt like very forced, very stuff, very stuff like that. Uh, so somewhere, somewhere in the creative works has thought... Steve needs to be more human. He is a human being. He's got these powers and he's susceptible to aging and stuff like that and the books. But it differs a lot from the Marvel Cinematic Universe who make him this soldier, this man who is the first line of defence and he is the one that's going to sort out all the problems. You see Chris Evans be more street hero-esque in the first one yeah and 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 you know the and the first avenger yeah when he's in the army but it's a strong military focus which yeah captain america is but he's always been a street hero he's always helped people anybody that asks him for help which you see a lot of in this film which helps build his character because he's he's just a guy who wants everyone to be safe doesn't matter who they are or their background or where they come from his job he feels as captain america is to be a guardian to those people and this film actually shows that which is actually really good like it, it's something that really interested me because uh, that opening scene you know with the old lady was just yeah oh yeah you, you've not seen that in another film do you know what i mean like that is something that you could see you know uh put in like winter soldier or civil war as a like a little throwaway scene but in this it actually means a hell of a lot you know it, it, there's so much writing on this movie in our well in fans eyes to be a success like it needs to have x y and z you know x super abilities shield y you know and z the human element all that thrown in that first scene just gripped both of us right away we 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 were expecting the we shit. We were laughing at it because like, it was so cringy and cheesy. It, but it was act- when we toned it down, we were just like, this is actually a really good... Bad movie. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's, its plot is good. The acting is still shit. The soundtrack is still shit. But the plot's good. Captain America and Steve Rogers, like, as separate entities, are much, much better. And, you know, like, generally the fact that the big issue I had was the first film just didn't have a plot. It was a villain doing something for money. Miguel, well, it's never outrightly stated. Um, it feels like he has a point. He's a revolutionary. Like he's, he's trying a- to prove something. He's trying to not hold them for ransom, but he's trying to change something. Yeah, he's trying to get his way. And it's almost like he knows that the government aren't going to listen to him. So he's just like, well, fuck you guys. I'll do what I want. And that's what made... And, and, and Christopher Lee's used very sparingly in it which uh, he's sort of like, you've got to the end of a graft, like watching some of these scenes, you know, these long character development scenes, you know. I would, and I then, would say that and he's then, only really in about maybe 10 minutes of the movie. Yeah, and then you've like, got Christopher... Like, min- minus the uh, long drive scene, the chase scene at the end. <laughs> but, like, other than that, like, he's maybe in it 10 minutes out of, like, say, 7 to 80 minutes. Yeah. Like, and... that's... For a main villain, that's really well done. Yeah, I know, because most times now, you know, if you compare it to the the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you know, you have villains like, say, you know, um, Killian in Iron Man 3. You know, they build the Mandarin up to be the main villain, but Killian's actually the villain, and he's actually, this is one of the things I actually kind of liked about Iron Man 3, was that the the Mandarin was meant to be the real villain when you realise that he wasn't, but you find out that Killian's the guy pulling the strings, and you only see him for roughly ten minutes prior yeah. to that. So you know you sometimes Marvel people have this expectation that Marvel have to have really endearing, wonderful villains, which they should because villains are what you know the villains are what I go for. You know, like Loki. You know, as my my main squeeze, he's my boy. Like, and people people give him all this 
this stuff because it's oh he's, he's an amazing character he's he's got this really unique story and it's like well you know you know he's fostered a killed his real dad and adopted him and lied to him about his foster dad it's not really a story you've not seen before it's a, it's a story similar to other ones i think the main reason why loki for example is a villain that everyone likes is because he's just got comedy he's 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 funny he's tragic and realistically you can see him as a good guy oh yeah even though he doesn't want he never really is and doesn't want to be so you know loki still stands as one of marvel's best villains for good reason he's not like if you compare loki to someone like um someone someone so kaecilius the doctor strange yeah kaecilius was actually quite a good villain to me it was typical marvel taking advantage of the villains but kaecilius was only in it for a little bit really but when he was there he dominated he made a point to show that he was a powerful and strong villain and in the end it's not kaecilius doctor strange defeats it's dormammu and through defeating dormammu he defeats kaecilius he never actually properly beats kaecilius apart from that bit in the middle but you know kaecilius comes back yeah kaecilius was a villain that you know actually won until strange had to do something he had to become a middleman to stop that which was an interesting thing um that's what this film kind of does you know it's, it's not actually steve that finds really you know who miguel is he gets informed by you know the people who are, he's working with we have an idea of where he is um, you have to do the rest and he does the rest you know it's that kind of way where steve seems like a middleman in this which is good you know it's like instead of you know the hero is the middleman he's the guy that needs to go i need to do something you know that's a powerful thing and this film really does do that it makes you kind of think oh he's he he what he kind of has this little subliminal dream in the middle of it that he wants to just settle down and have a family and just live his life like that and then you know that family that he kind of adopts uh, helps him so it feels like a family story and you know that's the kind of thing that i liked about this film i thought that it was a genuine it's it's a strong improvement from the first one without any shadow of a doubt so plot wise i think it just it's your typical super villain threatening to destroy something and wants money for it but well let's compare it uh, between one and two like uh villain wise they've got something they're gonna do whatever set it off to get money can't it's it's a carbon copy cut and paste job for script villain wise but christopher lee just sells it i think yeah like his acting is so good like just the little lines here and there that he delivers are perfection it's it's it's, it's my favourite line in the whole film though I have to admit when they put there's a bit where they put Steve in jail because he's asking too many questions around this small town and the no 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 they they put him in jail because uh, uh, Miguel got five of his guys to set about Steve Rogers but you know being Captain America he whipped him so 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 what happens there oh you're getting arrested for what attacking five guys yeah that 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 seems uh, reasonable, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but there's a kind of there's a bit of like the lift scene from Winter Soldier, kind of you know when they're taking him to the van and they keep prodding him and prodding him and really and he's not wanting to fight them. He's just like I'm not going to do it. I'm going to be the bigger man and I'm going to walk away. Which another Steve Rogers trait because he knows he could you know kick every one of their cunts in, but just point blank refuses, and they keep prodding him and prodding him and it's just like that, and he's like. And Steve's just like, don't do that. Like, I told you not to do that. And it's like that bit in the lift and Winter Soldier where he's like, if anyone wants to get out, do it now. Like, and then he just <laughs> sets about them. And it's, it, it just, it feels like that, you know. It, it feels like, you know, while it's a weak movie overall, I give it a lot of great, you know, great comments because it's genuinely something that improved from the first one and actually feels like a comic book movie. It a really comic does. book movie of 79 you know it's 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 mental like i did not expect it to be as good as it was even though i still view it as being quite bad but it's still you know it still could stand on its own feet and it's as i think it is pretty much rated like also one of the worst films oh easily easily for like, good reason I, but I'll, I'll still never understand like it might it might become a wee guilty pleasure for me 
Oh, what, go back to every now and again? Alright. Uh, possibly. The the one thing I still don't understand with the two movies is the motorbike. Like, okay, motorbikes is a an American thing, you know? So, why, why, what, like, what what's the need? He's Captain America. He's got all these abilities. He can chase a beach buggy. <laughs> like, uh, why does he need a motorbike? Yeah. Like, it, and also, the fact that he never, n- not one single scene does he take the helmet off. Yeah, the, it, <laughs> the helmet's kind of part of his it's, outfit. It's very much Judge uh, Dredd. The good one, Dredd, not the Stallone one, which we'll explore another time. Oh, dear. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, yeah, it's very much Dredd. Like, oh, don't take the helmet off. Yeah. And also, very comic book, like, apart from the government uh people that steve works with nobody knows that steve rogers is captain america yeah that is something that i'm living for because it's that is very vigilante i I, I, I don't think it's exactly comic comic accurate because no no oh come on take comic books like civil war the whole point of steve fighting against you know people taking their masks off is more powerful because people know who he is People know who he is. That's why he's such a powerful leader because he's someone who the world knows is Steve Rogers, but he still believes that people have a right to choose not to show their identity, which, you know, deep down makes you think about what he is like in a character in that comic book. You know, he's a guy who's like, the world knows who I am. Maybe the world would be better off not knowing who I was, you know? And that's why that's such a powerful thing to me. And this, no one knows who he is. Because there's a scene like when he breaks out of jail and the guy calls up Miguel and he's like, Captain America just broke Steve Steve Rogers out of jail. And me and Mario (laughs) were buckling because that's one of those throwaway lines you don't expect. And maybe in 79, it wasn't so much of a big deal because it was never a huge deal in the sort of golden silver age to you know have superheroes identities known to the world now it's a more prominent thing because it's all about identity and who these people are whereas you know you, you can you could talk about it for others but it just to me it was just a, a, a cool a, a cute wee line because it's like in the mcu everybody knows who steve rogers oh, yeah. is everybody knows who captain america is and it's it was different it was it was different to see in a film because even in the 90s one it's implied that everybody knows that Captain America is Steve Rogers oh, yeah. through history. So that's actually quite an interesting thing because they kind of reveal Captain America's identity as Steve Rogers in the comics because he's he was put in ice and everybody's like, oh, what happened to him? You know, it's it's like, so people kind of wanted that right to know and then they knew that it was Steve Rogers. So when he comes back, everybody just knows. This avoids that whole being encased in ice story. And actually, it's like, what if Steve Rogers wasn't encased in ice what if steve rogers wasn't a device for fighting nazis what if steve rogers was just captain america and it actually makes me have a wee bit of respect for the first part because it's like oh yeah your dad was captain america and that completely annoying thing (laughs) but they never ever mention back that it's just this is purely captain america um which you know to this day still shocks me like (laughs) This this film will be stick with me forever, and I don't know why. <laughs> it's uh, it's something. It has its redeeming factors, like I said right after uh, we watched it, that this almost redeems the first movie being so shit. Almost, like, yeah. Like there, in it, my opinion, there's no excuse for a, a film to be shit, especially if it's like <laughs> a first film. Oh, yeah. that warranted a sequel somewhere. But uh, thank fuck there was a sequel because holy fuck! This actually gives me hope for Suicide Squad too. <laughs> it, it does. No, I'm not even joking. It does because like the first film, so messy, so disjointed, so all over the place. Remind you anything? Mm-hmm. Suicide Squad. So maybe, just maybe, there's hope that you know, like it could happen. Like Suicide Squad two could actually be a. It happened in '79. Why not 2019? And or whenever know, they make it. I mean, this is just us talking about it. There's probably people who would listen to this who did see it in 79, like these cunts don't know what the fuck they're talking like about. Like stupid prick, a eh? <laughs> Arsehole. <laughs> I'm arsehole, obviously. Oh, I'm prick. Aye, of course, of course. Because, <laughs> you know, reasons. Yes, um, reasons. But overall, aye, the film's a vast improvement for the first one. 
I could watch it again. I could watch it again, but not for a while. Not for a while. The the wounds still hurt, like the shit still shows through, but it, it is actually sh- good. It still shows through, like I will not stand and sit here and say that it's above four stars, right? <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's probably a good, you know, I think I rated the first one like nothing. I think, yeah, you did. Uh, so, th- I mean, this one's earned, you know, one star. <laughs> and it's Just one? Well, I mean, Captain America only has one star. Uh, relevant, relevant. Well, one on his shield, one is so. so. Mm, okay, two yeah. stars. <laughs> Fuck you, right? Technicality. Technicality. Oh, but then, if you want to go with that. Oh, wait, uh, we're forgetting. <laughs> we are forgetting the best, two of the best moments in this entire fucking movie. If you ever watch this movie, please just watch the last ten. First five minutes and the last ten minutes of it. G- give me a moment. Best fucking moments of the movie. I'm gonna have to ease people in, right? I'm gonna have to ease. Oh, people hold in. on. You right. getting a? In the first film, right? In the first film, we responded to a severe lack of um, super moves, super abilities. But we were subjected a lot to his motorcycle, which we credited that his motorcycle has functions that we didn't see in the first film. We got to see what the hidden third function on his motorcycle yes. was. And Mario has never been more pleased. Like this, 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 this just does something to Mario. I don't know what it is. When in the first film, Captain America has a parachute on his bike, um, and Mario through that whole film was like, "Oh, tell me the parachute's red, white, and blue. Tell me the parachute is red, white, and blue. Make it so American, it hurts, and um, just make it so American that." You know, I want to be American. I want to bleed red, white, and blue. Like that was that kind of reaction that Mario had. And let me tell you that Mario is going to take great pleasure in telling you what occurs in this film because it was like something he was waiting for. Yeah, we were. Uh, we were the last ten minutes were experienced to one of the many things that happened in the first movie. There, not not a lot of special effects, costly and stuff. So we got a lot of chase scenes. So on this, Miguel is driving away with the virus and the antidote, I'd imagine. So he's driving away. Steve chasing him in his bike. But, you know, there's there's a great distance there. You know, there's hills and shit. So what does Steve do, James? <laughs> what what does that marvellous red, white and blue arsehole do? <laughs> there's a jettison yeah, button on his bike that brings out you know, I was hoping for a parachute, and I'm going, oh, yes. No, it's a glider, mate. It's a, a fucking glider. glider. That that literally... That, not, that not glides even, a bike as well. No, just, just, not, not just a glider. Uh, specifically, it's a hand glider. Yes. It's, yes, it's, James. It is a hand glider, a fully-fledged hand glider that somehow fits into that motorcycle. Because and, reasons. Because reasons. And Mario... It's... Let me wipe the tear away. It's red, white, and blue. It's got an actual American flag. It's got a fucking star right in the fucking center. That is beautiful. That is America right there. Flying through the sky on a glider. Chasing a big bad bastard. Just brings a tear to my eye every time. It's like full circle material. Yes. It's like... Because, it, I mean, he probably uses the parachute glider as... um you know, at roughly about the same time as he did in the first one, you know, near the end. Yeah. And it's like a, it's like a nice wee call back to that, but better. <laughs> like, like, like I say, the film is only good because it shocks you and it surprises you that, you know, in terms of character development, in, term, in terms of plot, in terms of, like, the super moves, in terms of the arsenal that Captain America has at his disposal, it just, it just makes you think, like, something happened along the way someone tried to guide these people and these creatives to doing something a little bit better and they succeeded because like i say while it is an absolute naff film i would watch it again purely because it, it is actually an improvement oh yeah and i think anything that actually has improved itself even if it's a terrible improvement is worth a go just to kind of take note of that. This film feels more like Captain America than the first part. Oh, easily. Because it's just so cheesy. It's just so... It's very it's very Silver Age, Captain America. So much cheese. And, you know, I, I just... I don't know. Also, let's get to the end. 
the ending. Uh, I do. And, and where we got uh, the idea for the name of this episode. It's a thing that we've came to where we take the take a funny line out of the movie and place it for the title. And we think, and I think personally, it's very metaphorical to our first trilogy experience of reviewing these horrible films because after this one we're going on to the big bad world of other films yes um other great bad and terrible movies and you know this this really brought it full circle captain america defeats christopher lee christopher lee uh throws um a vial of the aging accelerant at steve rogers in the hopes that it is going to do something to him cap flips his shield up and throws it at the bottle the bottle smashes and the whiplash sends it right back at christopher lee who starts to fight with steve so he gets a bit of the aging stuff on him but my god you see what that formula did to christopher lee it like, aged him so much rapidly like oh we can only speculate here that the virus that was spread elsewhere was diluted to well, was, obviously make a air. bigger, a, a, a wider populated area, you know. This this is just self-contained in this small bottle. So, pure. Oh, so yeah, pure it's virus. pure virus. So, obviously, it's more potent, it's more lethal, it's more extreme. So, that happening was, what, within, within 30 seconds with Christopher Lee, who still was relatively kind of decent age. age then, like, going to, like, completely white hair and dying. And he's, and, like, in the mouth, like, just going in. Yeah. Mode and oh. and oh. Uh, then one of his henchmen was in a helicopter coming down to, obviously, take his retreat. He's like, Miguel, Miguel. And James, what was that marvellous line that was delivered by Captain America, who actually... Has brought so much comedic factor to this movie that it's helped it. It's, it's helped. just hilarious. I, I loved it because it was just the perfect way to end such, such a fight scene. It's the best way to end cheese. The guy comes out of the helicopter and is like, Miguel, Miguel. And then Steve just stares him down and it's like, you're too late. Miguel died of old age waiting for you. It's a boom. Typical, traditional, shitty Captain America line. But it's so good. It's... I'd say it's more Spider-Man uh, one-liner. Oh, no. Steve's an old man, remember? Not in this. Not in this, I suppose. Fucking hell! <laughs> <laughs> it just... <sighs> I could see Captain America saying that. I could see Spidey saying it. Just just because uh, it's a pure... Well, here's the thing. Spider would probably cry at the villain's like dead body for an hour and then crack that line and then still cry afterwards, so... <laughs> Yeah, then, yeah, you, imagine, you could see. You can imagine Cap saying it, and then Tony Stark going, "We are not friends anymore." <laughs> like, you know, it's it's one of the ones. Like, it's just the film is genuinely still nah. We we've kind of bigged it up yeah. a bit more than we should have. Well, but it was just because of the sheer it, shock. It deserved it. It deserved it because it was it was an incredible improvement. Well, using, oh, oh come on, using... it was an incredible improvement compared <laughs> to the first one. Like, we can't even... I, I'd almost say you can't compare the first part and the second part because, like, okay, the villains have got the same kind of idea, but it's night and day. Like, if you watched... If this was just another kind of reboot Captain America story, separate from the first one, you'd go, actually, that's that's good, but because it... it but because... The movie is actually a f- sequel from the Drizzling Shits. It's m- almost even better. Like, you get me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, And I can't believe I'm saying that the second part to one of the worst movies I've ever watched <laughs> is the better of the three that we've done. But, in my opinion, part two of Captain America, 1979 titled death too soon is by far the better of the 1979 yes part one film and the 1990s captain america damn film. right 
it is it is the most comic book accurate even though it is littered with cheese and well it's a comic book movie you're you're supposed to have a lot of comedy in it a lot of cheesy one-liners like look it's i mean look at get back to spider-man even uh the is it thomas jane punisher Mm -hmm. that's got a lot of cheese in it yeah i think so a lot of comedy with a whole oh i've got a blowtorch that's so hot it's going to feel like cold and he's got a lollipop to his back you know like that that's that's funny like even though punisher's not meant to be funny he's supposed to be a brutal bastard it's a really it's really dark humor with the punisher yeah and i mean like i say the mcu try to tone down on the cheese like it's not so much cheese as so much as as good humor at the time so it's like this is just i mean maybe it's because you know this is older than us you know this is <laughs> this is older than us. we didn't true. know what comedy was in the 70s but apparently it was like this so <laughs> you know no one in the 70s was funny and that's that's my opinion and i'm sticking by it and <laughs> i think genuinely it's hard to admit that this is the best of the bad bunch but it is and that's what i think out of the three what would you say uh hands down like the the 1990s had a lot of uh throwaway stuff you had nazis you had the proper origin you had red skull you had the frozen nice cool you had all that you it was a second part that acts two and three that were an absolute clusterfuck first part of 79 shockingly bad this really good like com- compared to the others really good on its own compared to first avenger winter soldier or civil war uh yeah still it still, still fall, fall short by a mile but it's you can more make... notable than and honorable than the other two what 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 i was probably arguing earlier was um i could make a decent case with this compared to the first avenger because the first avenger is by far the better film but i can make an argument with this that this is more honorable to the source material a little bit even though it completely misses the nazi thing please that but it captures who steve rogers is as a person better in some respects and on that basis alone i could put an argument it feels like uh the kind of plot i would read in a, a silver age comic yeah you know, and for any kind of film with any kind of budget to purely put that out, you're like, Jesus, right, okay. Like, like I said, I was shocked. I was, but <laughs> it, it's purely maybe down to the fact that the two films we watched before it were just so shit bad <laughs> and so shit that, you know, you get this, which is actually like a slight breath of fresh air even though it still smells like shit. But it's still a breath of fresh air. And I would rather this shit than that shit. So, it, it wins out of this trilogy for me. What I would think. you give it out of five? Or did was it ten? Uh, uh, out of ten? I think we'd done out of ten because you could actually go that kind of extra margin and go, oh, it was just better than a one, one out of five kind of thing. But like, you know. Three out of ten for me. 3 out of 10. If, I, if I'm giving it 3 out of 10, purely based on how good it is at honouring Steve Rogers as a character and how they develop his character in this film and how they, you know, bring, you know, your typical, unbelievable supervillain plot but still manage to keep it interesting with an actor like Christopher Lee. And, you know, that I, I would, I'm would i not going to give it more because it's still a pile of shit. But, the stuff that I think needs to be there is definitely there. And I think if they just... I think if they had better stuff at the time, this could have been really good. I think if, if they had the equipment we have today and they had the, the, the people, like the right people on board to make it today, yeah, this could have been really sellable, in my opinion. I think it's got the bare bone basics of what a Captain America film should be. Um, and, you know, people might disagree with that, but Silver Age style... You're, you, it's it's on point. It's it's pretty. And for if I'd seen this, if I was like maybe a kid in seventy nine and I'd seen this one, it's less political than the first one, which makes it more enjoyable. 
and it and it feels me kind of authentic even though there are some bits that just throw it away and make it boring and tedious and shit but at the end of the day what's needed what needs to be there is there and i think if they could just build on it like it could have been really really good maybe earn five stars make it average i would i think i gave the last the part one maybe two two out of ten and i'm trying to think what i gave the 90s one i think i was kind of level playing field so i'd say I, I can't give it a four out of ten because that's that is still quite a relatively high mark than what it deserves <laughs> yeah <laughs> well compared to like other movies we'll do down the line that are definitely more deserving of that i would definitely go with a three out of ten because it isn't entirely bad like it still has the bad points of from part one uh but there's a lot of good in it and a lot of redeemable factors that were were sorely missed from the first one like we got slight teases of it this one actually hit it out the park mate like i could watch this and and easily say it's Oh, bold statement time. One of the best... Worst kinda... movies. <laughs> yes. One of the best worst movies you'll One... ever see. In fact, is that the case? Because what are we doing next time, James? Oh, dear. We'll get to that. But, I mean, overall thoughts. It was good. It's doable. It was good. It's doable. I'd sleep with this film. <laughs> I'd regret it immediately You'd after. kick it out of bed? Oh, no, I wouldn't cuddle it afterwards. No, oh. no, 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 no. Um, I'd feel deep regret after sleeping with this film, but uh, for the most part, you know, it's it's the best of a bad bunch. Yep. And you can get all three of them in a box set together. Yes, like really, I did. Like Mario did. Cause he's... For, for our torturous entertainment. Oh yeah, jeez oh. Anyway, um, now that the Captain America trilogy is done, you might be thinking, what can they possibly do next? Well, we've been researching and we have a lot of stuff. We have many, many movies to put ourselves through. Oh, yes. We have Green Hornet, Catwoman, Batman and Robin, Batman Do- Forever. Dolph Lundgren, Punisher, uh, seven, 1978, Doctor Strange, which until a few weeks ago, James, I didn't know it existed until you shined that upon my life. I'm so excited for that. Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. starring the Hoth. yes. Uh, we've got but don't worry we both throw some good films there, 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 again. There, it won't just be shit you know we, like I said last last time time before you can't always have shit you need to shine the light on some good stuff and give credit where it's due like this movie that we just watched exactly so because this one is actually quite decent we're going to go back to bad movies starting next week with James, I can't do it. I can't. I can't bring myself to say the words. You can just take a deep breath, tell those adoring the adoring public what they can be subjected to next time on Glaswegian Geeks. The Catwoman movie with Halle Berry. Is does that not just sound amazing? I've never seen that. I've never seen it. I've refused to see it out of principle. Out of principle? Well, yes. I'm peer pressure and you to watch it, son. It's going to be an experience <laughs> and a half. Uh, experience is putting it lightly. I played the game. How was the game? Oh, oh but I'll save that for next episode. I, d- I don't want any uh, spoilers for it. My silence is a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> that is enough. Anyway, guys, thanks for listening. And until next time. Say something. Fuck you and watch this movie. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>